Okay, let's talk about placent preview and placent accredited diagnosis and management RCG guideline 2018. What are the risk factor women with placenta previa or low lying placenta? The seizure and delivery, the seizure and delivery associated with the increased risk of placenta previa in subsequent pregnancy. The risk arises as the number of fryer seizure and section increases. And ART technology and maternal smoking increase the risk of placenta previa. So do you screen women for placenta previa or low lying placenta? If so, at what gestation and how you have you should follow? The mid pregnancy, the routine, the mid pregnancy routine fetal anomaly scans should include placental localizations, thereby identifying women at risk of pre existing placenta previa or low lying placenta. The term placenta previa should be used when the placenta lies directly over the internal os. For pregnancy at more than 16 weeks of gestation age, the term low lying placenta should be used when the placenta age is less than 20 mm from the internal os on trans abdominal or trans vaginal scanning if the placenta is thought to be low lying less than 20 mm from the internal os or previa the discovering the os add the routine fetal anomaly scan follow of ultrasound examination including a dba scan recommended at 32 weeks of gestation to diagnose persistent low lying placenta and or placenta previa okay what is the role of what is the role and what are the risk of tvs Clinicians should aware that previous for the diagnosis of placenta previa or a low lying placenta is superior to trans abdominal and trans perineal approach and it is very safe. In women with persistent low lying placenta, placenta previa at 32 weeks of gestation who remain asymptomatic, an additional TVS is recommended at around 36 of gestation age to inform discuss about the mode of delivery. Okay, so first thing you have to do when a 32 weeks then 36 weeks first is 32 weeks then 36 weeks first is 16 weeks 16 then 32 then 36 if asymptomatic the cervical length measurement the cervical length measurement may help to facilitate the management decision in asymptomatic women with placenta previa. A short cervical length TBS before 34 weeks of gestation is increases the risk of preterm pregnancy delivery and massive hemorrhage at caesarean sections. Where should women with low lying placenta, placenta previa are carried in third trimester? Women with recurrent bleeding, tailor antenatal care, including hospitalization to individualize women need for social circumstance, distance between home and hospital, availability of transportation, previous bleeding episodes, hematology laboratory results, acceptance of receiving donor blood and blood products. Where hospital admission has been decided, an assessment of risk factor for venous thromboembolism in pregnancy should be performed as outlined in the RCG. Uh, then this will need to balance the risk of developing venous thromboembolism against the risk of bleeding from placenta previa low lying placenta. It should be made clear to any woman being treated at home in third trimester that she should attend the hospital immediately if she experiences any bleeding including spotting, contractions or any pain. Asymptomatic when women with low lying placenta or placenta previa uh, in third trimester should be counseled about the risk of preterm delivery of steady hemorrhage and other care should be tailored to their individual needs. Women with asymptomatic placenta previa can provide 32 weeks follow up scan and manage at home should be encouraged to ensure they have safety precaution in place, including some women are available to help them necessary. Is that place of cervical cervicals? Uh, the use of cervical cervicals to reduce bleeding prolonged pregnancy is not, not, not supported at all. Not supported. Okay. In what circumstances at what gestation should women afford antenatal corticosteroid? A single course of antenatal corticosteroid therapy is recommended between 34 to 35 plus 6 weeks gestational age. Women with low lying placenta and placenta previa is appropriate for 8 to 34 weeks gestation in women at high risk for freedom birth. Can be recommended between 34 to 36 weeks. But um, and is appropriate. Is there a place for the use of tocolysis? The tocolysis for women presenting with a symptomatic placenta previa, low lying placenta may consider 48 hours to facilitate the administration of steroid. You can give for 48 hour 
for steroid coverage. If delivery is indicated based on maternal fetal concerns, tocalizumab should not be used in attempt to prolong gestation. At what gestation should delivery should be occur? Late preterm 34 to 36 plus 6 weeks. Uh, delivery should be considered for women uh, presenting with placenta previa, low lying placenta, and a history of his vaginal bleeding, and other risk factors for preterm delivery. Delivery time should be tailored according to the antenatal symptoms. Women presenting with uncomplicated placenta previa, delivery should be considered between 36 plus 0 to 37 weeks gestational age. In what situation is vaginal delivery is appropriate? What situation? Women third trimester. Asymptomatic low lying placenta mode of delivery should be based on the clinical background. Women with preference supplemented by ultrasound finding, including the distance between the placental age and the fetal head positions related to the leading age of the placenta. Optimizing the delivery of women with placenta previa prior to delivery. Prior to delivery, all women with placenta previa and their partners should have a discussion regarding the delivery indication of blood transmission. Hysterectomy should be reviewed and any plan to decline blood and blood products should be discussed openly and documented. Placenta previa and anterior low lying placenta carrying a high risk of massive obstetric hemorrhage and hysterectomy. The delivery should be arranged in a maternity unit on-site blood transfusion service and access to critical care units. Women with atypical antibodies from a particular high-risk group and the care of this women should be involved. Discussion with local hematologist and blood bank. Prevention and treatment of anemia during the antenatal period recommended for women with placenta previa and low-lying placenta. Deliver the women with placenta previa and low-lying placenta with what grade of obstetrician and anesthesia should be attended at and delivery. A minimum requirement for land cesarean section women with placenta previa surgical procedure should be carried out appropriately by experienced operator. In case of planned cesarean sections for placenta previa or rolling process, senior obstetrician, usually a consultant, senior anesthetist, usually a consultant should be present within the delivery theater should when the surgery is occurring. When an emergency arises, senior obstetrician, senior anesthetist should be allotted uh, immediately and attend urgently. Regi what anesthesia should be given? Regional anesthesia considered is safe, is with the lower risk of hemorrhage than general anesthesia. Remember, spinal is better than general. <clears throat> Women with anterior placenta previa low lying placenta should be advised that it may be necessary to convert generalize if required to ask consent. What blood products should be available? Choose license. The hospital transmission laboratory is essential for women present in placenta previa. Close uh, rapid infusion, fluid warning should be immediately available. Cell salvage recommended in women who have the anticipated blood loss is greater enough to induce anemia, particularly women who are declining blood product. Surgical approach consider vertical skin incision and or uterine incision when fit is in transverse light to avoid the placenta, particularly below 22 gestation is Consider using pre-operative intraoperative ultrasonography to localize the placenta and the optimal place for uterine incision. If the placenta is transected, if the placenta is transected during the uterine incisions, immediately clamp the umbilical cord after delivery to avoid excessive fetal blood loss. If pharmacological measure fail to control hemorrhage, initiate intrauterine tamponade and or or surgical hemostatic technique sooner rather than later intervention radiology techniques should also be urgently employed where possible early co resource to recourse to hysterectomy recommended if conservative medical and surgical treatment is ineffective antenatal diagnosis outcome women with placenta acrida spectrum what are the risk factor of women with placenta acrida spectrum the major risk factor plus placenta acrida spectrum are history of acrida in the previous pregnancy previous season section Delivery other uterine surgery, including repeated endometrial curators, the risk of the number of prior cesarean section increases. Women requesting elective cesarean delivery, the if she had a one previous sections, then eleven percent, two previous sections, then it is B forty percent. Women uh, requesting elective cesarean delivery, non medical indications should be informed the risk of the placenta acrid spectrum, its consequence, and subsequent pregnancy. How a placenta acrid spectrum be suspected? Diagnosis antenatally, antenatal diagnosis, uh, antenatal diagnosis, placenta acrid spectrum is crucial in planning management, has been shown to reduce maternal morbidity and mortality. Previous cesarean delivery and the presence of anterior low lying placenta and placenta previous would alert the antenatal care team uh, of the high risk of the placenta acrid spectrum. Ultrasound screening. For diagnosis of placenta acrid spectrum, ultrasound imaging is highly accurate when performing a skilled operator with experience in diagnosis of placenta acrid spectrum. Refer women with any ultrasound features suggested to placenta acrid spectrum to a specialist to know the imaging expertise. Women with history of previous cesarean sections to be have an anterior low lying placenta and placenta previa are routine fetal anomalies should be specifically screened for placenta acrid spectrum. 
is there a role of MRI? A clinician should be aware that diagnosis of MRI and ultrasound imaging in detecting placenta aggregate spectrum is similar when performed by experts. MRI may be used to complement ultrasound imaging to assess the depth of invasions, lateral extension of the myopathy invasion, depth of invasion, lateral extension of the myopathy invasion, especially the posterior presentation and or, or omitting the ultrasound signs suggestive of parametral invasions. Okay, parametral invasion, posterior presentations. MRI may be used to complement ultrasound imaging to assess the depth of invasions, lateral extension of the myopathy invasion, especially with posterior placentation and or, or women with ultrasound signs suggestive of parametral invasion. Where should women with placenta aggregate spectrum care for? Women diagnosed with placenta aggregate spectrum should be care multidisciplinary teams, especially center expertise in diagnosing managing invasive placentation. Delivery for women diagnosed with placenta aggregate spectrum should be taken in specially center with logistic support, immediate access to blood product, adult intensive care, ICU support, and ICU care support. And the multidisciplinary team planning in <clears throat> when should delivery be planned for women with placenta aggregate spectrum in the absence of respected for freedom delivery in women with placenta aggregate spectrum plan delivery 35 to 36 plus 6 gestation provide the best balance between fetal maturity and the risk of unsuitable delivery the planning delivery women with unsuspected placenta aggregate spectrum once the diagnosis of placenta aggregate spectrum is made contingency plan emergency delivery should be developed Partnership with women and clinician institution. What should we include in the consent form for cesarean section in women suspected person? A new woman giving consent for cesarean section should be unstressed risk for cesarean section and the specific risk for placenta aggregate respect to enter massive obstetric hemorrhage, increased risk of lower UTI, printed damage, need of blood transfusion risk of hysterectomy. Additional possible intervention in case of massive hemorrhage should be discussed, including sales, salvage, intervention, and reduction when available. Directive delivery of men with placenta aggregate spectrum should be managed by multidisciplinary team who should be a senior analysis of station and gynecologist, appropriate access to managed control, surgical specialist, and analysis most similar. What analysis is most appropriate in the choice of analysis technique for session section of men with placenta aggregate spectrum should be made by analysis in the doing procedure in most of men prior to surgery. The women should inform their surgical procedure could be performed safely with regional analysis here, but should be advised that it may be necessary for more general analysis if required. Optimize the delivery of women placenta in what surgical approach is in section instructor with placenta left in self preferable to attempt to separate it from internal. When the extent of placenta aggregate is limited to the in depth surface area, the entire placenta implantation area is accessible and visualized complete anterior and front posterior without deep pelvic interest preserving surgery may appear but including partial myometry resection. Uterus preserving surgical techniques should only attempted by surgeon working in team with the product exporters counseling. The area currently is insufficient to by routine use of ureteric strain and spectrum. The use of the strain may have role in very urinary metabolism in bed of presentation. What surgical apps should be used for many presentation? Limited evidence of protocol to specific surgery in present aggregate. Practitioners should be involved with high risk of peripetum secondary complication. The second is to Expected management elective peripetum hysterectomy may be unacceptable to women with injury injury preservation. Considered inappropriate by the surgical team in such case, the person in situ should be considered. The person left in situ local arrangement need to be made in so regular review, ultrasound exam, and access emergency case when many experience of the bleeding infection. Method of exit should not be used in experimental as it improves and benefits the human person. Intervention on the large studies testing to the safety, pegacy, intervention condition.